Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your Cardboard Concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and working with you to make your game nights better. Today, the question I'm going to be answering is, what's in the box in regards to this? This is the Ghosts Betwixt from Innocent Traveler Games, um, recently hitting stores hot off the Kickstarter presses, very successful Kickstarter for this game. What this is, is this is a modern dungeon crawling game. Modern as in um, modern, it's a newer game, so it uses some new mechanics, and modern based on the setting, so it's not a fantasy setting. It's set in the real world. Now, it's also retro. Jumping a bit ahead of things like Stranger Things, this one is set in the 90s. Now, it is set in the heartland of America, where you are going to play a family investigating a haunted house, and if I remember correctly, you're looking for a lost brother, but I'm not positive on that. Um, I have not seen this game. I do have to thank Innocent Traveler Games for sending this for us to check out, and I am really looking forward to it. Now, one thing, fair warning for anyone thinking of checking this game out, despite the Saturday morning cartoon look of this game, this is a solid, heavy-ish, detailed, involved dungeon crawling game, where you have characters that you're going to customize with skills, you have weapon proficiencies, you have character sheets, you're going to level up. This is not, despite its look, not a um, your first dungeon crawler. If you want something like that, check out maybe Ghost Fight and Treasure Hunter. In this case, though, this is the Ghost Betwixt, a surprisingly heavy, modern dungeon crawling game. Now, I'm hyped to get a look at this, but first we're going to read off the back of the box. You can skip ahead if you just want to see what's in here. Richie needs your help. He was last seen kidnapped and taken into the Burnett family's Worlds of Terror haunted house. But why Richie? What's going on in Worlds of Terror? What are the Burnett's up to? Benerts. Sorry, Benerts. There's an R in there. What are the Benerts up to, and who or what might be waiting within the haunted Halloween attraction? There's only one way to find out. So grab your holy water-filled squirt gun or your favorite golf club, hop in the family minivan, and join Bill, Joan, Avalyn, and Maddox as they search for Richie in the battle and battle of the Benert family. Set in America's haunted heartland, the Ghost Betwixt is a light-hearted 90s horror dungeon crawler for one to four players. Again, that lighthearted might be making you think easy, simple dungeon crawler, not this. Explore nine unique missions across a narrative-driven campaign. Find hundreds of unique household weapons, level up and build each family member's talents, make strategic decisions to swing each dice roll in your favor, and unlock unforgettable surprises. Well, you have what it takes to survive the night before it's too late. All right, I'm hyped. This sounds good to me. This sounds fantastic. I can't wait to try this game out, but first I gotta open it up, so let's move on. All right, here you have my shiny new copy of Ghost Betwixt Chapter One. Note at this point, Chapter One is the only chapter that's out so far. We're gonna crack this open for the first time. Uh, I gotta say, I do dig the box art. Very Saturday morning cartoons. Uh, some people have called this a mashup of Star Wars Imperial Assault and Scooby-Doo. And I gotta say, that's a pretty good pedigree right there. Oh, interesting. So everything's in a bag, but it's not sealed. I like that. Hurry, right, we have stickers. So there are gonna be some stickers to apply and instructions on how to apply them. And from what I understand, these are for um, making you know the difference between monsters. So if there's multiple stands of the same monster, you can tell them apart. We have the characters. We have Maddox, who looks kick-ass in his wheelchair here. Um, with your character sheet to track a few different things, like your, bo your bonus dice, bonuses to your dice, as well as any other dice you, you can improve. There's stuff that you have equipped, your armor, what's in your hands and heads, as well as your basic stats. Single-sided. Um, if you ever own anything from... Um, I'm drawing a blank on the name of the game. Stronghold Games. You'll recognize the thickness of this. That's a little disappointing. I would have liked thicker card on these, but fair enough. Then we have Bill with his golf club. Evelyn with the slingshot. And Joan. So four players, obviously, though you can play it solo. Uh, into, are these colors different? No, okay. I thought maybe the colors here were different, but they're not. All right, then we have a quick play guide. Always appreciated from what I understand. This is a fairly complicated game. Awesome. I love it when I see, um, I want to say ingredients. That's not the right term. Contents showing me both sides of cards. What, what's what the good side, sorry, the front and the back. 
I'm fumbling all over here. How to set up mission one, how to set up your first game. Looks like nice, thick, I, I like the size of this text. There's some call outs, I see lots of examples. All this looks really positive. Shows tokens to track. Again, I'm not. I'm just flipping through this so you can kind of see the layout and what it looks like. We have the credits and we have notes. I haven't seen that in a long time. Oh, nice, a, a list of the conditions. Now this is a little smaller text, a little odd that it's not the same text as the rest. Then we have the rules reference. Oh, now we get the tiny text, okay. <laughs> oh yeah, I would have liked, I get it, it's a thick book. I would have liked if it was all the big text. There's a nice table of contents here. Golden rules, I'm gonna flip through this very quickly. That's a lot of text, two columns. This is gonna take a while to read through, which might hinder my ability to get it played tomorrow. Wow, okay, a lot to read through. Um, make copies of those, so here's the character sheets. I'm assuming you probably get those online. Now, this is awesome. Check out the index detail here. Not only, okay, this is cool. I'm gonna see if you can read this if I bring it up close. Not only does it tell you like ability, but it actually kind of defines it. So it's kind of a mix of an index and a glossary at once. I like that. Very cool. I greatly appreciate it. Wow, look at this thing. It's huge. All right, I don't have page numbers on these last 20 pages. So 17 pages of the rules. Actually, it felt thicker than that. I do dig this art style. Then we have the mission guide. Wow, look at that. Look at the thickness on that. I dig the high school notebook look. It's missing the S. This is a 90s game. Where's the S symbol? The infinity S. <laughs> I was not a child in the 90s. I was a child in the 80s. But This is cute. I like the look. I, I don't want to flip too much through this. So starting equipment, because this is the actual missions. I don't, I don't want to spoil anything. So I'm just going to grab some. Oh, I like this. D6, random events. So there's randomizers. Here's how to set up a mission again. I, again, I don't want to spoil anything. Story text to read out. Continue the mission by doing this. And again, this doesn't look simple. Like this doesn't, like that's a nice different chunk of story text. It looks like it goes different ways because story one, four, two, new rules being added. Interlude. Oh, this looks neat. This looks like significant amount of content here. Monster trophies. I might have just spoiled something. Spoiler text. Story text. Story. It's weird the format kind of changed in the middle. I wonder if each each scenario has a different look. It's just weird. All of a sudden it turned into line notebook. Scavenger hunts. I don't know what the... Maybe that's a different way to play or something. Again, I don't want to spoil anything, so I don't want to read it out loud. I love all the amount of artwork in this. Very impressive. Cardboard token. Holy cow. Look at that. Look at it all. It's a lot of cardboard. That is a, that is a lot of cardboard. No wonder this box is so heavy. So here they are without the shrink. Um, Two-sided. Are they different? Are they same? these? No, they're different on each side. Cool. I was trying to tell if it was just duplicated on each side. All right, so some of these I know. Like, these are status effects, and if you're affected by multiple status effects... Um, these are showing your armor and stuff like that. These are for randomly determining types of monsters. So if you look, or, or there are numbers for them. You've got a, just a ton of different tokens. So these are bonuses to your dice rolls. So just tokens to represent those. Then we have, um, these tell you room numbers. So you're gonna, you're gonna, they're map tiles. So you would sit there and the map is determined randomly. So there would be a stack of these. And you would like, when you open the door, you would flip over the top token and it would tell you it's room number, whatever. These are treasure tokens, and again, same deal. You don't know what the treasure is until, so like these are things you're gonna find. These are generic tokens. You've got traps, you've got doors, and so on. Uh, then we get into the actual room tiles, and I gotta say, I really dig the look of this, though I'm slightly disappointed in one thing in this game, and honestly, it's nothing against this game, but these are not, I don't think those are one-inch squares. The reason that matters is most modern role-playing games use one-inch square grids, and miniatures are designed to fit one-inch square grids. And I was thinking these might be awesome tiles to be able to use in like a D20 modern game. Again, nothing against this game. That is me wanting to use components in this game in a different game. So you can't really blame them for that. Um, you have monster standees. No miniatures in this one. Uh, at least not for, unless the heroes happen to be miniatures, but I don't think they are. Uh, you have standees. I know I just did them upside down. Uh, you can already see how well these are punched. Because rooms are just falling out. Rooms are actually two-sided and different. So it's not like the same room, light and dark. Um, we can kind of zoom in here. You can tell that some of the squares are color coded to show like, you know, blocking or hindering terrain or so on. I got to say it all looks very clear. I can see the lines well. 
I can see them even better on this side. There is a lot of stuff going on. Uh, so again, the red on this is a little harder to see, but logically you can tell there's something physically there. Uh, it looks pretty good. Doors are very clear. I appreciate that. Now what I do like is that they're drawn three-quarter view, so some of the artwork is going out of the squares, but it's still very clear where stuff is. We have more monsters and more rooms. This is not going to repack well. Oh, you got a tractor. And then monster tokens. So again, these are, these are you don't know what happens, right? So there'll be a bunch of these in a room, and you'll flip them and find out what you get. Oh, no. It's monster number four. It's monster number five. A couple more rooms. I know all the rooms aren't the same size, though most of them seem to be. I dig the variety here. You got indoor, outdoor stuff. More rooms, more monsters, more tokens. Here's the story of rewards. So many of the things will just say, like, collect six story tokens. And when you do read out things, so these mark where story elements are. Another bedroom, so there's multiple bedrooms. This looks like the exact same... This is the same tile. No, there's different monsters on it. Tokens for marking wounds. Again, even the baggies look very uh, Scooby-Doo to me. You can kind of see some of the bad guy tokens there. Uh, here is some other sized rooms, finally. Long hallways, ruins. Some water. You can see, again, for marking damage. And some more sizes of rooms. And yeah, here's your, here's your heroes. Sorry, I'm upside down. So heroes in this version of the game, this is the retail version. I think Kickstarter, you could have got miniatures, but there are your characters here. Your four characters. Everything looks great. Um, I have no complaints that I can see here. I actually really like the art for the monsters. All right, other stuff. So, out. So first off, we just have stands. These are what you're gonna use to hold everything. Stands, standees, whatever you call it, stands for the standees. Um, they're pretty standard. What I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to pop one of these guys out, one of these creatures out, and just put one in. Oh, yeah, those get nice. Holds them nice and well. Uh, it slides in pretty well. And what you do, the, the pro tip here is to spread it a bit, like pull it apart a little bit when you're trying to slide stuff in, just to make it a little easier. But that's sliding in nice. I don't, I can't see the cardboard getting damaged at all. Uh, they're beveled at the top, so like it instantly spreads when you're pushing. You don't even have to spread them, like I said. Look, on, off, on, off. Nice. I appreciate that. So a whole bunch of stands, mostly for the monsters, and then, of course, for the characters. Lots of really neat-looking custom dice. Um, something about the aesthetic of these dice I really like. You know what? I'm probably just going to leave them in. So you have like, and they're, they're all different. So there's custom dice. So one of the things that's weird in this game, they use fractions for a lot of stuff. So like if you roll this shield, you literally have one quarter of a defense. So it has to be combined with other stuff you already have equipped. And this is the one you roll for death. This is the target changes. So instead of attacking you, it attacks someone else. Um, I think there's like a dodge token somewhere on some of these or our blank sides. Uh, these are your hit tokens. So again, you could roll half a damage. Which I just don't think I've seen a game do that before. So if you rolled half a damage on each of these, two blue dice, you would do a full, you would do one damage. But not only that, you might have like a, a butter knife. And a butter knife might do half damage. So if you roll this with your butter knife, you do a full damage. Whereas if you roll this with your butter knife, you do one and a half damage. Now you're not tracking the halves, but it's in there. So these are some of the damage dice. These I think are better damage dice. Uh, the diamond set off special abilities. What's interesting is these are kind of smaller than I thought they'd be based on pictures, but they're fine. Um, they are not etched, but they appear to be like silk screened. We also have randomizer dice with numbers on them. These are not just D6s. No, like they don't go one to six. They go zero to three, but then there's two threes. I'm not going to look at each individual die side here. There's some light yellow ones that have different sets of numbers on them. Green attack dice that seem like they're possibly not as good. They seem to have less, less hits on them. There's also a blue die. So each of these dice is going to have a different distribution. Some are going to be better than others. Um, this looks like a standard D6. No, none of them seem to be standard D6s. So here, let's put these up here. So these are all numbered dice. So we have a bunch of numbered dice. Then we have attack dice, which appear to be all these blue and greens.
they have attack dice, defense dice, and again, there's two different levels. There's like that in this case, there's that dodge symbol I thought was going to be there, and then the dodge dice, which the odds aren't very good. It's your chance to dodge or redirect a target. All right, very nice looking dice. Um, the detail on them, the, the symbols, like even far across the table, that's really easy to read. Even the halves, I find fairly easy to read, like from far away. They stick out. Oh yeah, tons of cards. I am not going to open this. I don't want to spoil anything. So some of the stuff in this game gets unlocked as you play. So I don't even know what's in here. You're going to have to pick up the game to check it out, find out yourself. We're going to start with the non-collect. Oh, there. I knew there were standard D6s somewhere. I didn't catch them in the corner back there. I'm like, there should be some standard dice too. All right, standard D6s and a D8. So these are not used in combat. These are used for other things. I don't know if it's rolling for movement, but it's also used to like roll up random tables and stuff. There is also an eight-sided die, again, for randomizing. Again, I'm just putting all the dice in loose. We're going to open up this stack of cards next. Now, some of these are going to be scenario cards, so I'm going to see if I can figure out the backs first, because I don't want to spoil anything. We have a bunch of objective completes. Yeah, so these are story, and I'm, I'm just going to open the top. So you have, like, objective one, and it's find one of these tokens, and it gives you the rules. So then these, this is another mission. So it's a separate mission, and again, you have objective one and so on. Here's the next mission. So these are all your mission cards to tell you what you need to do. Uh, artwork's all great, backs are all the same, but then if you look, the rewards are different. So when you complete it, you're going to unlock stuff. Now we have ally cards. There are two of those. So it has the stats for, for two of our allies that can help you out during the game. Then we have monster cards. So these are just the stats for the various monsters in the game. And I've got to say the monster types are awesome, like rabid ferrets. That's just really cool. What dice they use to attack. Um, what their stats are. You have Guard Dogs. You've got Benner Lackey. We have the Rolling Pin Lady. We have the Spitting spitting Silverfish. Yuck. I'm not going to go through all these. I'll let you discover the rest on your own. Summary cards that tell you the hit dice, and there's the progression on how they get better. So I definitely I kind of called that right. So how good they are to how much better they get. Um, also tells you like how to move and so on and more summary on the back four of those for the four characters Then we have more scenarios So again objectives three objectives two Completes on the other side more scenarios Some more scenarios this looks like a nice quick one some more scenario cards Look at that that these are all scenario cards now, from what I understand of this game, all of the missions are also replayable because all of the monsters, the traps, the treasure you find, and even the order the rooms come out is randomized. So you can replay any mission any number of times. Plus, even if you didn't do that and you end up with the same mission, the way you can customize your characters, you could try it with a completely different team with different builds. Speaking of customizing your team, here we have some of the talent cards. So talent cards are skills you can unlock for your character. These are all the different skills that just the one character here can learn. Again, look how thick that deck is. There is a lot of game in this box. I will admit the card art here is not as, as impressive as others, but you know what? Symbols work. Um, maybe they're different types or the effects they do. Like this shows a map board. I like card art, but this is fine. There's so much other art in this game, I'm not going to complain. I don't know what drop deck means at all. And then equipment deck, and then drop deck again. So I'm just going to show off just a little couple bit of equipment here. Again, the artwork again looks like someone scribbled in a notebook, which is cool. You got squirt guns, you've got a, a saber sword, what the different things do. You've got vampire teeth. And here's the thing I was talking about with defense. So if you look at what is this here? So this is a bar beekeeper's shield. If you look, though, it all gives you point, like halves and thirds and whatever. So one-third of a white die gives you one-fourth of an armor, and it weighs one-fourth of an item. Well, you need to combine that with more stuff to be actually useful. So you would need the beekeeper shield with the beekeeper suit and the beekeeper helmet to get all those benefits. But the fun part is you don't have to mix the same sets, so you could actually have the beekeeper helmet with something else, say. So again, it says drop deck. 
I don't know what drop deck's all about. And then we have an equipment deck. So it's a different equipment deck, but they're green this time. So that might just be for a different scenario. Now again, it says drop deck. I'm going to keep these split up by these drop decks because I don't know what drop deck means. Um, I'm seeing monster trophies, instant bonuses. Then we have the items. So this is stuff you can pick up. Oh, and there's some talents at the back. So we have various items you can pick up, what they do, and so on. I have heard healing items are rare. And as far as I can tell, this is going to be more of a mix of the same. So we have the talents for another set of characters here. And again, you've got all the rules for the talent on here. But like, look at all the ways to customize just one of the family members. So we have all the talents for that character. The talents for this character, oddly, some are upside down. Talents for that character. Look at them all. It's a lot of different talents. And there should be some more item decks, I'm assuming, because there's a lot of item decks in this game. So again, item decks, stuff you can pick up around the house. Beastly. Okay, this is another part of the game I really dig. So you have all the different mon monster types. Well, each monster, when you face it, remember we had that silverfish earlier? Well, this silverfish, this time you fight it, it has a loose screw. The next silverfish you fight, you might randomly draw. That silverfish has a jagged nail it can attack with. And this is the way that each of the monsters is different every time you face them. Foaming mouth. So it's a silverfish with a foaming mouth. That's what this deck is. These say humanish. So those are, if you're fighting a humanish monster, the different types they could have. So if you're going to fight, say, a skeleton, it might have a white picket fence post with it as a weapon. So we have a, a deck of those. Then we have another huge equipment deck. This one's the brown deck. Again, I don't know what the differences here are. Uh, huge deck of equipment. And that's it at this point, because again, I'm not going to open this. I know there are items you can unlock. There's more of those drop deck cards. Okay, drop deck. Thank you, Sean, in the chat. So drop deck cards are actually stuff the monsters will drop. So it's a drop deck. It makes perfect sense, right? The monsters drop loot. So that's it. Here's, it's kind of a mess in here. Everything you get, I'm going to double check. Oh, I don't know if you're allowed to look under there, but I will just, I will, I will hold that that far. I don't know if that's a spoiler. So, so there's stuff under there. We'll just say that there's stuff under there. I don't want to, I don't want to, piss anyone off um, showing stuff they don't want to see. Oh, now I'm curious. I'm really curious. I want to check that out, but I don't know. I don't want to spoil anything. There's stuff under the box. Okay, I was hoping to put some of these stacked here because I'm never going to fit all these punch boards back in if I don't stack some of these. So that's it. Uh, watch this speed up and get put away quicker than I can do it live. Ta-da. All right, I gotta say at this point, I was already hyped to try this. I thought this looked really cool. Just looking at what I knew online, looking at the Kickstarter, looking at the graphics, I did watch a couple videos. Having touched some of the stuff and seen it in person, I am now even more hyped. This looks fantastic. And I probably shouldn't actually stand that up because I'd put all those boxes and decks loose and I, I might cry right now. That was probably a bad idea. Anyway, so, <laughs> Ghost Betwixt, besides my copy now being a total mess, is going to be a pain to sort. Looks really cool. I cannot believe the amount of customization that seems to be in this box. Like, the amount, that, how thick the scenario book is. How thick the objective, how many objective cards there were. How many different talent cards every character has. And that's in addition to, like, getting weapon proficiencies and skills and other parts of this game. Like, the number of customization options are fantastic. For what looks to be a one-and-done campaign game, I really do expect this to be highly replayable, having looked at the components in here. Component quality is excellent. I will say the player boards are a little thicker than I would have liked, but you know what? That's fine. No, there aren't any miniatures in this. This is the retail version. I think you could have got minis if you backed the Kickstarter, but that's not what this is about. In this version of the game, what you get is cardboard standees, and you know what? They look great. They look fantastic, and I was extremely impressed by the stands. The stands, the tokens were sliding in and out without any damage to the cardboard whatsoever. 
ton of great looking custom dice, very clear looking rule book. Everything looks great. I can't wait to try this game out, possibly as early as tomorrow. So thank you for joining me for a look at what you get with the Ghost Betwixt. Now, special bonus for those of you here live and those of you watching on YouTube, I've got something else I want to show you. With my copy of the Ghost Betwixt. So, I also have the upgrade kit for the Ghost Betwixt. This is going to be available separately, so you will be able to get this on your own. So it's not like I'm showing off a Kickstarter exclusive. This is the upgrade kit for the Ghost Betwixt. So I'm going to do another quick unboxing here, a little bonus unboxing. And we're going to take a look at what you get in the upgrade kit for the Ghost Betwixt. So first off, I'm going to get this out of the way. Upgrade kit. Now, I'm not going to spoil anything again, right? So you're not going to get to see what's inside that envelope. Okay, I can see it just seals. There we go. So what do we get here? Oh, see? There, I thought there might be character sheets. So stack of character sheets. Very cool, actually. Very cool. A, a stack for all four characters. So you have character sheets for all four characters. Greatly appreciate it. I don't have to go online and find anything now. So I gotta admit, if I can print them bigger, I might, because that's tiny text. Next, we have a baggie. Uh, there are many things you randomize in this game where you are going to pull tokens from stacks. Well, instead of having to pull from a stack, you can pull from a bag. Appreciate it. Do not open until you complete mission three. Hmm. And you can use these alternate monsters in the Ghost Betwixt. So there are alternate art monsters here which actually might make it cool where you can put out two different skeleton types or so on. Neat. And this are four dials for tracking your health and mana. So you don't have to track it with pen and paper. With that are a bunch of these little, whatever you call those, plastic things that hold them together. <laughs> Grommets, is that the right word? So yeah, a bunch of this for tracking for your four characters. So you can track your health and mana uh, by dial, instead of having to track it using counters, or tokens, or writing it down. Cool. Very cool. Nice little upgrade kit. I greatly appreciate character sheets. Character sheets are awesome. Not having to go online and print those is very cool. Though, seriously, I, I might still go print out. You can go all the way up to level 7 and higher. Big game. So, very cool. I am going to guess these would fit if everything was punched. Because my copy of the Ghost Betwixt is not punched. So I will know one. No. No, they still look shiny. I am just going to put these right on top just so I don't lose them. So this is all just kind of going on top of my copy of the Ghost Betwixt. So there you have the actual end of this unboxing video where I took a look at the Ghost Betwixt as well as the upgrade kit. I got to say, if you can get that upgrade kit, I don't see a reason you couldn't. I do know it's being offered as promos when you buy a copy and get that for free. I strongly recommend doing that. Though, I gotta say, none of it's necessary. Character sheets, you can print off the internet. Alternate art for some of the monsters, do you really care? Like, yeah, it's cool, but you don't need it. And well, dials to track stats. You can do that by pen and paper or any other method. So nothing in there that you, sh you shouldn't have huge FOMO if you missed out on it, but it is cool. Oh, you do get a nice baggie too. Nothing you need though, just some cool bonuses. So that's it for my unboxing of the Ghost Betwixt from Innocent Traveler Games, a modern set in the 90s dungeon crawler about a family investigating a haunted house looking for their missing brother. Thank you for joining me. You can find me all over the internet as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Head over to the blog, tabletopbellhop.com, for other awesome gaming content. And you can support my efforts if you go to patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop, which helps us improve our graphics, get better sound quality, which we should have the show and things like that, as well as just pay for our podcasting, hosting costs, and so on. Speaking of podcasts, find the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast on your podcatcher of choice, or myself and my co-host, Sean, answer your gaming and game night questions. That's it for this unboxing video. Good day and game on.